Into the... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all going skiing today? <laughs> Y'all going uh, skiing? Uh, you're the nicest looking Antiva. <laughs> Got a major flex, you know? Oh, yeah, toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the... Yeah. That's hilarious. So, so <laughs> I have to give a little bit of warning since we're all, all quarantined right now. Um, <laughs> I did... So they, the Patriots, the White Hats did take back Google and I made a video on it. So, and it, it hit a wave. So probably during this broadcast, I'll have a lot of people like adding me and stuff. Like you might hear a lot of, <laughs> so I, I, I apologize now for if that gets annoying, but I can't stop it because we're on the phone with Donovan. So Donovan, cool <laughs> shirt, man. Get that cool shirt going on. What's up? Hey, you know. Get a rocket during the quarantine. Yeah, you stay away from that corona. <laughs> hey, so real right. quick, real quick, I, I do have to share with our audience that um, uh, so you can Google search now uh, John or John McCain and and George H W Bush. You can you can uh, look them up and you'll find out they're war criminals now. You can look up Epstein and Clinton. It says they've been um, executed by the tribunals too. So. Yeah, military tribunals mm-hmm. is taking care of all that stuff. That's all on the internet now. What and Michelle Obama is a tranny. Yes, you can Michael, see the real Michael Lavon Robinson. Honestly, whatever. for long, I I didn't <laughs> think she was a tranny because I was like, I just thought it was funny. I was like, yes, yeah, NSA trolling, mm-hmm. but really, there's it's a freaking man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, and then I post on Instagram, people get mad like, so so what? <laughs> like, uh, look, I didn't say anything about trannies. I just said that. He lied. Mm-hmm. That's all I said. And they're hating me f- for being right. That's what it is. So I'm like, hate me all you want for being right, you know, but I didn't say nothing bad about trannies. I don't, I don't give a crap. Do whatever you want to your own body. It's your, it's, I ain't judging you. Right. There's only one standard that judges you. Only God can judge you. But I can tell you what God says in his word, but it doesn't mean mm-hmm. I hate you. God so loved the world. I got anointing to bring back trannies, you know, from the dead. So we're cool. Yeah, <laughs> share that one. <laughs> he can bring back trannies from the dead. <laughs> yeah, not Jesus as did. tolerable as me. Yeah, I welcome COVID nineteen in this house. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I was like, sorry, I got a lot of sleep in my eyes. I was like, uh, I said, uh, I said, you know, Obama's a pedophile. That's on the internet too. <laughs> I said he's gonna be stripped of the presidency. You guys, you guys are okay with that? I said, you know, I said, you hating on me for just telling the truth and you guys are all mad because Donald Tr- Trump grabbed someone by the you know what, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but someone lies and that's okay. But if Donald Trump grabs a woman by the you know what, that's not. So where's the standard? Mm-hmm. I think Donald Trump did far less than he didn't lie to the American people. You know what I mean? You know, like uh, he, he admitted that stuff and apologized about it. But yet I don't see uh, Michael admitting he's a tranny yet. Mm-hmm. They killed, they killed. You know, they try to kill, uh, what's the name? What's her name? Joan Rivers? Joan Rivers. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's the hubbub, man. <laughs> I just want to get that out there. We go. <laughs> Anyways. More to come. More to come. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay <laughs> so tuned. we're doing the seven thunders scale now. And uh, oh, for, 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 something, <laughs> for something that wasn't really written about, it says, this is write it not. <laughs> There's sure a long thread for it. So we're going to get started. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. All right. Holly Weird <laughs> TV starts now. Welcome to the Hollywood Welcome back to the Hollywood Hollywood TV. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to open up to Revelation 10. You ready? Let's go. Revelation 10 says, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. Well, what kind of clothed with a cloud? Remember Jesus said he'll come back in the clouds of heaven? Here we go. Right there. And a rainbow was upon his head. A cloud is a rainbow, right? Because on upon your head is a crown. So it's a crown of a rainbow, but you're clothed with that same light. It's a light beam. All the colors of the light uh, of the light spectrum are inside of, of the rainbow are inside the light spectrum. So, and it's a cloud. You cover with it, and and uh, his face was as it were the sun. See, 
the clover of the sun. Inside the sun is the rainbow. That's all color spectrum. And his feet as pillars of fire. Fire is the sun. Is the is the rainbow that's you're clothed with. That's upon you. That's uh, with you. Right. That's a cloud. It's your head. Right. It's on your head. So and and and, and your and, and your feet are like pillars. Right. That's a that's a day three operation. But this is talking about when you hit a day seven. What happens when you hit a day seven? You open up what's called the seven thunders. Let's get into it. He had in his hand a little book. We're going to talk about that right now. A little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. This means you can go, you can touch both realms. You got to open heaven. And you touch the spirit realm and you're in the natural realm still. All right? And he cried with a loud voice when a lion roars. Right, a roar is a voice, like we talked about from uh, Psalms, uh, that like the how the people roar and and the waves roar, but now a lion roars, right? And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So seven thunders, thunder is a voice. You'll see that later today in this episode. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which is seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So they didn't write it. And you're going to find out here soon why they did not write that. And the angel which, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lift up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that, are, that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things that are therein, that there should be time no longer. Or delay no longer, right? Why? Because you're starting to break the, into that eternal realm. But I thought I said like the angel was doing that. Yeah, well, the angel covers you, and the only way because angels walk to and for, up and down to and from the midst of stones of fire, and the stone of fire is that rainbow and that and that what covers your head. That's all the way up here. So it's a cloud. A cloud is a stone of fire right here, right there. That's what covers you, and that's what they they're clothed with. And when it clothes you, they can walk through you like another grid. We are stakes and we're all corded together through this tether and they walk through us, right? So that's what you find out through all the stuff we put together. We're going to talk about this book here in a second, but all this is written right before the seventh uh, trumpet. You know, I'm going to talk about the seventh trumpet from our last video. All that's written because when you hit this seventh trumpet, this is activated, right? Because remember, it says the mystery of God should be finished because when you hit this in fullness, you got to go in. But when you're hitting both, when you're hitting right before the seventh day, when you're on the sixth day, touching the seventh, you're touching both spirit realm and natural realm. You got to open heaven, and we want to show uh, what that is. But I want to read this the rest of this real quick. It said, and the, "And the voice which heard, I heard from heaven, spake unto me again, said, Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went into the angel and he said to me, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up." And it shall, and the book shall make your belly bitter, but it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey. And we're going to talk about this, right? I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. He said unto me, you must prophesy again before many, many peoples, many nations, and many tongues, and many kings. That's right. So... Many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Right? We're going to talk about this many. We're going to talk about this bitter versus sweet. And we're going to talk about eating it. And we're going to talk about this prophesying. And we're going to connect it all with right over here. Um, about this little book that's open. Why do they say little? Why do they say open? Right? Why is it in this hand? Right? And that, why does this even matter? Why is this book connected to all this rainbow and the head and the cloud? Because it is. It's connected to that, and it says, Mighty Angel Came Down. Um, first, I'll just say this one, because it told you it would be a bunch of people. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> now you're going to get there. Uh, so, yeah, so we got Mighty Angels Coming Down. You find out in Joel that they come down. But there's a way, we'll get into the seven stars scale more into that, about how angels are activated. But for now, we're going to get into this little book here. Okay, so let's go to Isaiah 40, verse 15. Isaiah 40, verse 15. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
also says, you know, I don't like how like Facebook just pops all your stuff up like that just automatically. Well, doesn't do that on your phone, but it does it on your computer. Anywho's, uh, mild complaints. All right, here we go. Four fifteen. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust of the balance. Well, he takes up the aisles as a very little thing. Did not say it's a little book? So it looks like that you, remember it says count, that you can count the nations. So it looks like little's tied to nations. We know that they're little and they're, they're small compared to, because greater is he that's in you than he is in the world, right? Um, so I'm looking, yeah, it's good enough to read that. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Let's read Daniel 7.10. It's all going to make sense here in a second. Daniel 7.10. Yeah. So we saw that their count is little. They're counted. Right? They're little. So, Daniel 7.10. 7, we'll read that and probably maybe 11. Or no, I'll probably read test 10. A fire stream issued and came forth from before him, and thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Remember I saw a little book opened? Why is it a little book? Because inside that book is written the judgment of the nations. So it's a book of judgment. Mary said these are judgment scales. So judgment was set, but it's set when? When it's opened. Right? You find out more that the judgment is given to the saints, which is all up here and everything like that. Actually, just kind of scroll over there real quick so people can see it. Uh, the saints of the, of the Most High shall take the kingdom, possess the kingdom forever and ever. And then there, we take the kingdom, but we got to judge people, remove them, take the kingdom, kingdom, possess it, right? And it says right here, over oh here, that uh, the judgment shall sit and he shall take away his dominion. See, you got judgment sits when you take away dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And up here says, see, until the ancient days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And time came that saints possess the kingdom. You can't judge me. Bit, bit, bit. Yeah, guess what? We can judge you. We're saints. We're judges. So too bad. Yes, we can be judgmental. It can't, it's, it's not, it's not going to be like like we're being hateful and measuring you against ourselves. We're judging you with the judgment of God and we're keeping commandments for self. So someone that keeps commandments can judge you. Yes. And then when we're in control of the nation, which we are, <laughs> you know, just let you know, we're all the arrests are happening right now. <laughs> During this uh, shutdown of the quarantine coronavirus, everyone's being arrested. So hey, hey, told you we win. So, anyways, judgment given, see, is given. A little book is in the hand of the angel, I thought. Well, looks like, but, but, so is the angel judge, or does the saints judge with the angels? Don't you know that you'll judge angels? You know, we judge the demons, right? But guess who judges with us? Angels. They give us the mighty ones. They come down, they empower us with that fire through the Holy Spirit, tethered uh, uh, us all together. They walk through that. And then they, boo, how do you think the angel of the Lord smote people in the Old Testament? They were with, weren't, wasn't the angel of the Lord with the saints in the Old Testament when they did stuff? Didn't Moses walk with an angel? You know what I mean? When he did all the miracles? He said, didn't God say, I'll send my angel with you? So that's how it works, see? All right there. So anyways, that's that. You see that, so basically the little book is opened. Let's read um, Job 31:35. Job 31, 35. I'm going to read about this book here. What it is. Mirror says that the nations are counted as small of the bucket. The like drop of the bucket. So uh, it's, it's a very, yeah. So it says, Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire. Uh, my desire is that the uh, Almighty would answer me and that my answer had written a book. All right? Write a book. So what is this book? Sure, I would take it upon my shoulder. You would take the book upon your shoulder? And bind it as a crown to me. So book is a crown. It's bound upon your shoulder. I'd say it covers you. Mary said a crown is a cloud. And so I would declare to him the number of my steps. The book can write the number of your steps. Or it can judge your steps. Right? It has dominion in it. I'd say dominion is take possession of the kingdom. I'd say, I'd say the book is judgment. which is take, We just read all of it, everyone. So this, it goes on your shoulder. You got It's bound to you. 
right? Because it's a cloud. The cloud is the crown, is the rainbow, is the light, is the, so the angels can tether through you so you can judge. You take dominion so you can possess the kingdom, so you possess your nations. Dominion theology. There's a scale for it. There's a scale f to measure where you're at, to measure where everybody else is at. And the judgment's given to you by God, right? So if we go over here, was and we keep on falling over here, right here, this right here, it says, Doth not he see my ways? Does he not count on my steps? We can see all the ways of the enemy and see that they're just a little drop in the bucket. That's why, you know, right now it's like, well, the military is making these rests, right? But but we can't because we're 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 only get involved in politics, right? Yeah, right. You guys are stupid. Unwise virgins, shut up. So wise mm -hmm. virgins, stand up. So here's what we're doing. We, we can see all the ways of the enemy, right? We can count those things by the scales, and those scales are written in a book. Right? That's this whole whole thing is a scale to measure, right? So you weigh an even balance, right? You know about that way you know about integrity. So sorry it's not a, a, a full of integrity to lie to people if you're a man or a woman and you mm -hmm. lie to people where you're born in to get the presidency, you know what I mean? You're not you, if you're from Kenya and you're transgender and you lie to everyone about it, sorry. Um that's wicked. So we're gonna judge you, okay? So <laughs> anyways um, let's go to next is Job thirty six twenty nine. Job. 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 Now we're going to go Job. <laughs> yeah. So this is our main one. One of our main topics here, guys. Also, can you understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise of his tabernacle? Remember that cloud is a tabernacle. Okay. Remember that. And remember, there's a the noise that comes out of that cloud. Remember, a cloud is a tabernacle, and there's a noise that comes out of it. It can be spread too. So, behold, he spreads his light upon it. So, light is connected to that cloud, it's connected to the tabernacle, and he covers. He spreads the cover, the bottom of the sea. We know that this is where the hell is, right? But it's also you're closing hell physically, but you're also closing hell spiritually, because this is the sea re represents the spirit realm, and the bottom of that spirit realm is connected to hell. Right? There's 14 dimensions. There's seven dimensions in hell and seven dimensions in heaven. And uh, as it, it's all one realm. It's not like we go to a, you know, like another universe, right? It's, there's only one universe. We're all connected. Right? It's not some weird marble thing. So, for by them judges he the people. See? Book of Judgment. So, as I said, the book is a cloud. He judges by the cloud, which is the book. What you need to know, because then when that cloud is on you, which is your garments, when that cloud's on you, you open up or stretch out the heavens, right? And then you roll up the old heavens like a scroll, like I said. Remember? You roll up the heavens like a scroll, and the stars will fall like figs from a tree. A scroll is a roll of a book. We're going to get into that in Ezekiel. But so it's judgment. He also gives meat in abundance, right? Abundant life. So when one stretches out, because you're filling up, you're stretching out God's hand, and the heavens that's right here, rolls up like a scroll and the and the smoke goes away and the cl clarity comes right and also your eyes lift up you can see all this play out everyone all right let's go to ezekiel chapter three we're probably going to read the end of chapter two so we're going to be in the end of two in ezekiel real quick so we're going to read up here and says um open your mouth eat what i give you and when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book. See, there's a roll of a book. There's a roll of a scroll. Okay, we're going to find out what's there. And he spread it. See, you can spread the clouds. You know the spreadings of the clouds? See, you spread God's book, which is spreading God's tabernacle, which is spreading God's judgment, which is spreading the book, and, and which is the judgment set. The book was opened, or you could say heaven was opened. Heaven is a book. It works. That's why there's books here because there's heaven looks its operations just like a book, right? He spread it before me and it was written within and without. So it's written like on within it and without it. And without it is on both sides of the scroll. So when you unroll something, it's written here too because it's on both sides and then there too, right? It's exactly how the spirit realm looks. It's you know multifaceted and you see both sides. It's written within and without meaning. There is within seven thunders, without seven days, seven day scale, seven thunder scale, 
right? If you have your foot on one of each, you can you can have an open door where it's open, right? And there was written there, lamentations, mornings, and woe. Remember, we're talking about judgment, lamentations, right? So moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat what you find, eat uh that you or, or eat what you find, eat this roll and speak unto the house of Israel. Sound familiar? We just read it. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause your belly to eat and fill your bowels. So fill your bowels with this roll and I'll give you. So if you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, so I said, you're filling your bowels with the Holy Spirit, filling it with this word, right? You have to know this word to go to the people. Otherwise, how's God going to use you? Right and with this roll and that I give you, then did I eat and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. See, it's in his mouth honey for sweetness. And he sends me, son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel, speak with, uh, with my, and speak with my words unto them. So you have to have God's words in you, and for thou art not not sent to a people of a strange language and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people. See, it wasn't to many people here, but it's to many people in and the uh, book of Revelation. So here he was just sent to his own people, but now in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, John was sent to the nations. Here they weren't sent to the nations. They were sent to their own people, right? Because that's where the root was. Everything was happening there. Of a, so you're not to, many, uh, not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou cannot understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto you, just like they won't today. Right? Mm -hmm. And for they will not hearken unto me, for the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. So um it says that they're rebellious, right? And let's go on to the next page. Uh and I want to read verse fourteen. Uh it says, So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was up strong upon me. So remember the hand of the Lord's upon you and when you eat the role of a book, the role of a scroll. When you eat the role of a scroll, the role of a book, um, it, it's in Jeremiah, it talks about role of a scroll too. Um, when, you eat, when the hand of the Lord is upon you, or that hand of the hand Lord can be upon you when you eat that scroll. You know what I mean? So there's a sweet in your mouth, but it's in your belly is bitterness. And what that really means is, is that when you eat, eat that, and when you eat the word and the revelation comes, you see times, keys, scales, and frames, or you see the grid, Kind of like Matrix, in Matrix Part 1 when Neo saw the green coating and stuff. Yeah. When you see that, it's like, it's it's sweet because it's with you. Like you start seeing everything like, wow. But it leaves you kind of this bitterness in your stomach in that you, you have to now fix the condition of what you see. This is why you become a judge. And you got to like now remove stones out of people, the things that degenerate them and bring the smoke and the shadow of death. And you got to lift their eyes up onto God. And a lot of people, they hate you for it. A lot of people are hating me for saying the truth about Michelle Obama, that she's a transgender. They're like, so you bashing transgenders? I said, I didn't say one thing about transgenders. I said, he lied. So, so what? So what? And so I'm like, so are you hating me for telling the truth? That's kind of messed up, right? You're hating me for telling the truth? So, but, you know, so you're okay, you're okay with liars? You'll bash, you know, Donald Trump for saying grabbing someone, but you're okay with people lying to the American people about their sex and their gender. If no one cares, why did they care so much to lie? I think I just beat you in the in the debate there. I, you know who I'm talking to. I'm gonna post this up on your page later so you understand. You can block me all you want. I'm I'm governor of California. I'm scooping up all the houses and lands. We're in a global currency reset. You're gonna lose everything anyway. So you're gonna wish you were nice to me. So, anyways, Obama's pedophile. <laughs> so, all right, so that's, there's that. We went to, let's go to Job 26, 14. And we're a third of the way through. Bless you, child. Bless you, child. 26, 14. All right, so, so here, I bring, I mean, I told you I'd come back to that, you know, why they wouldn't write the thunder. So it says, lo, these are the parts of his ways. Talking about the ways of the crooked serpent, right? But how little a portion is heard of him. Remember the, the little book that's in his hand? It's about all the crooked things that the nation's done. And that's why the nations are about dropping the bucket because and they're little because greater he's in you, he's in the world because you can beat what's crooked by making it straight, number one, right? 
and all you gotta do, God formed formed the crooked serpent. It says so. He know he, he basically God understands all his parts. These are his parts. He says I will not conceal his parts. Basically, God's going to let us know the parts are the ways of the serpent, so we can beat him. He said, "Fear not, for I have overcome the world." Right? The prince of this world is judged. All we gotta do is execute that judgment, and every nation, every generation has a chance to beat the devil over the head. But they've given the devil too much power and said he's God of this world, which he is God of this world. That's why you have to remove him. So God's given us authority. Go remove him. <laughs> go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. That doesn't just mean go tell people Jesus died for your sins. That, that's the, to get rescued. Now you can be a conqueror. Go conquer the devil. Now you're rescued. You don't need to be rescued and go to heaven. That No, that's not being rescued. That's like that you lost. <laughs> like you lost your body. <laughs> Keep your body. Conquer the devil. Get immortality. Keep going. Right? It says, how little portions heard of him, but the thunder of his power, who can understand, right? So write it not, right? The thunder, the seven thunders scale is very hard to understand the inside of the cloud until you're there. You can understand the outside of the cloud. That's that's why there's seven levels to forming the outside, this, to form the cloud on you. But then when you start touching that seventh day, the mystery's finished and, and you hit that seventh trumpet, then you go inside like Enoch did. Now you're within, and you gotta sh shake hands with those that are right below you, right? So because you, you once you go in, you can go no more out. Because once you come out, everything else is gonna die. You know, I mean that's not in Christ. So this is we're gonna get into all that today. This right here. So remember that. All right. So we're gonna go to. Uh, I guess we'll read Psalm eighteen eleven. Yeah, we're going. To, Psalm 1811. We'll read this one first, and I may have to read. Yeah, we'll read this first. So, so it said, He rode upon a cherub. God wrote, rides upon a cherub. And he did fly. Yeah, He did fly upon the wings of the wind. So, just because Jesus flew doesn't mean that you can't. It means that you can too. You can fly upon a cherub. <laughs> Isn't that great? So, we can get there. That's part of uh, the higher levels. You get your wings. There's a seven star scale and and there's a seven thunder scale right before that. We'll get into all that. But he made darkness his secret place. So now we got this thing called a secret place. His pavilion, which is the secret place, round about him. So there's round about. Remember the rainbow's round about your head, right? So there's round about. It's on your head. But here's this round about him. Where dark waters. So I'd say darkness is dark waters and secret place is pavilion. Well, here it says it's round about him, where dark waters, well, I'd say round about is both, and thick clouds of the skies. A cloud is a pavilion, is a secret place, and clouds have dark waters. All right? So these aren't, this is all, even though these things are in the natural realm, these things are painting the spirit realm, everybody. It says that the brightness that was before him, so brightness is in those clouds, which is in the place, which is in the pavilion. Which, so is it bright or is it dark? It's both, everyone. You'll see in here in a minute how that works. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstones and coals of fire. Remember, remember that, it's, that said that you can lift up your voice and the bunch of waters may cover you. And there was thunders and lightnings and hail and an earthquake. That's right here, right? So the coals of fire will land on you. That's where brightness comes from. It's from the coals of fire. But since it's a cloud, it's also dark. So we'll read into that here once we get to Exodus. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Thunder is his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. So you got coals of fire, hail, thunder, fi there's fire again, dark waters, pavilion, secret place. Right? That makes you fly. So don't forget that because it says darkness was under his um, feet. <laughs> he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness under his feet. This is spiritual darkness or spiritual wickedness right here, but it's also the dark cloud where God's judgment, which is the book open. And then finally it says, He sent out his arrows and scattered them. What's his arrows? He shot his lightnings. His lightnings are arrows. He discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundation of the world were discovered. At thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, so the breath of God is connected to the lightning. I'd say that's the cloud. Inside a cloud is lightning, which is the angels. Those are, remember it says the, the arrows of your quiver, 
like when we talk about your children, God's children are his arrows, which is his angels. And that's what we are. We're his children, but he clothes us with the same lightning that the angels have on them, and we look like him. That's the only thing we're missing, everybody. We're just short of glory, and this is the glory of God, which is the angels, which, the, which where they walk up and down to and fro in the midst of the stone of fire or the cloud, right? This is a stone, or there's a grid inside there. That's God's pavilion and his secret place. God's pavilion in a secret place is this cloud that the angels walk inside, but you have to birth that cloud. You have to form that cloud. So you have to lift up your voice that the abundance of waters may cover you, right? Forms that cloud and, and mixed with fire at the altar and the angel carries your, your vapor up, right? And casts the, light, the lightning down. And that's when the channels of waters are seen. Or you see these channels of, of both the... Well, both the clouds, the dark and the light, the smoke and the cloud, the morning and evening, you see their channels or you see their foundation, right? This is a stream or a circuit of heaven is what you see, or that's how you discover the foundation, all right? We talked about that in a previous video about discovering the foundation. We're going to do a video on this. How to discover the foundation is how to see the channels of waters, right? You need God's word, right? And then uh, he sent from above. He took me and drew me out many waters. Many waters is people, but it's also troubles from those people, right? And and use, you have to use God's rebuke, which is judgment, right? You rebuke those waters of those nations. It all comes back full circle. Okay, so we're going to go to... I kind of want to read Psalm 81.7 real quick. Psalm 81.7. Since we talked about the dark place, or the or secret place, I said... Didn't that, would 1811 say to say secret place or say dark place? It says secret place? I think it says secret place. Okay, we'll come back to it. It says secret place? Okay. Well, here it calls, okay, 81.7 calls it, Thou calls in trouble, and I delivered thee, I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. See? Secret place is now called the secret place of thunder. It's, there are seven levels to it, everyone. Seven, seven thunders, right at not. Because the thunder of his power, who can understand? That means his, it's a secret place of power, right? That's where God's power is. Where his power is, where his lightning is. I say power, lightning is power, right? We use it for electricity in the natural. So, so I'd say angels are mighty ones or ones of power, right? They come out of the secret place. So uh, can we go there and look like an angel? It says in the scriptures and gospels that when you walk worthy of the Lord, you're counter worthy and you are a child of the resurrection and are equal to angels and then you neither marry nor are given a marriage, right? Because you are now equal to angels. That means you have the same power that they have. That means after you build your seven days, you're equal. You're no longer fallen, but you're risen to a place of equality where you look the same, right? And then there's you go inside where they are and there's another scale, seven thunders. That's why you're, you're doing the same operation you did outside but now you're within, and now you're helping the next generation climb, right? And you're making sure they find all the puzzle pieces, but you're building your scale inside there. Then there's seven stars above that. It's so when you get your wings, and now you become an archangel, and you can travel and help start raising up God's tent on the inside so you can hover up here. Because remember, it's we're in a flat earth, but there's a dome here. The, the tent can't just be down here. You got to take these lights and now hang them up here. You got to garnish the heavens so now the tent can come up here and melt the firmament. That's the way it works. Okay? That's why the flat earth model goes perfectly with all this. You either believe the earth's flat and we're in a dome, or all the Bible's bull crap. Because <laughs> all of the Bible's perfectly fits with that like a glove. Okay? So we got that one there. Um, let's go to Acts 13 11. Acts 13 11. We talked about dark waters. There said dark clouds, dark waters. Right? Then here it is in the New Testament. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, enemy of, <laughs> thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And this is what we're saying today, but, oh, you're judging us, Paul. But it's okay, it's Paul. You know what I mean? You're judging us. Who are you judging? Who cares if it's a tranny, Paul? Right? Right? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind 
not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately, immediately, there fell on him a mist, a mist, or water as you could say, and a darkness. He went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. So he went dark, right? He went blind. So this darkness was dark. I'd say it's a dark cloud. There fell on him a mist. I'd say it's water, dark waters, right? Dark cloud. I'd say that's judgment. So he protect him, protect himself, right? So there's that one. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 21. So, yes, we have to judge people. Sorry. Yes, you all been brainwashed to not judge anyone and not have a standard just to live like a piece of crap. And God's so loving, he's going to just forgive you and 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 not hold you accountable for any of your sin right so that's why you need to repent so jesus can forgive you so all your punishment goes on him so you can get out get out and god can redeem your life and start you over right that's the way it works so it said and the people stood afar off and moses drew near unto the thick darkness where god was so it says thick darkness it is dark again so let's follow this line up here here it says and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. I'd say smoking is, is a dark cloud, right? Huh. This ain't the smoke of the bottomless pit, though, by the way. This is something different. This is God's cloud. This is a good cloud, but it's bad for those that's on the wrong side of it. And when the people saw it, they removed. Remember it says they will remove the wicked? You remove them, and they stood afar off. This is how you remove them with the east wood, everyone. This is what I was talking about. Right now, we're moving them through a north wood. We're not using this to remove them. We're doing the wisdom that comes from this and removing those people and, and, and putting them all in prison and all that stuff. Just real quick, I'm going to follow this line so you guys can see it. We're going to go all the way right here, right? And it's talked about basically, and Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. See, Mount Sinai had a smoke. This will come upon you, by the way. We're going to read that by the end of this. Because the Lord descended upon it. That's why God is a smoke. He's a fire from loins up, fire from loins down. And that's inside you, everyone, when you got born again. But how come you don't see it on your face? Because you have to grow. Well, we don't see this until Jesus comes back. No, you crucify the flesh, you pass the test, and then it starts to pour out of you and people see it. <laughs> okay? You birth the times. You have no times. It's not an event. If you're, not, if you're waiting for God to do it all for you and there's no cause and effect, you're dumb. Okay? So because the Lord descended upon it in, in fire, see so fire and smoke, right? And the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of a furnace. You have to ascend, and he descends, right? This has to ascend on you. It'll go up like like a, like a vapor, and the vapor goes up, and the fire comes down, right? Same thing. And the whole mount quaked greatly, or they were shaken, right? You shake it, and they're removed, right? And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, because God is long, and he's not short, right? And it waxed louder and louder. That's what you got to do. It gets louder and louder. That's why there's seven trumpets, goes louder and louder, brighter and brighter, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, right? Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. Voice is a trumpet, which quakes people, and that's when they tremble, tremble right? And there it goes, it says that, and it says there was thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, and so all that people that was in the camp trembled, right? People tremble, and then they quake, and then they're removed. All right, this is this is the east one. We're going to do this to Hollywood, though. Isn't that wonderful? You're going to see this. As I said, if you miss out on the arrests and you still think that it's just a quarantine coronavirus, it's not a psyop, okay, go back to sleep. And you miss out on the global currency reset and I scoop up all the house's lands and you're left with starting over, okay, you missed out on that. Don't miss out on this, everyone, because you're going to die, okay? That's the third wave. All right, this is the third wave. I'm telling you, it's coming. All my words coming to pass and we're documenting everything. And so everything's coming to pass right now, okay? Just know that. Okay, so we got that. Let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, 1. So we talked about the secret place. We talked about the dark place. It's a dark cloud, dark waters. We talked about the secret place of thunder. It says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'd say shadow smoke. So this is under God's presence, right? You're now under it. Well, God's presence covers you in measures. That's why there's seven days scale. Then there's seven vial, or I'm sorry, there's seven thunders, which is next. But what about the trumpets and the vials and the seals? Those are, those are scales so you can see where the enemy's at. Those aren't the brightness of your rising, but they do rise you up in a northward tactic so you understand how to come against it. But the brightness of your rising comes from the seven days or seven spirits or seven lamps scale. It's all the same thing, 
Okay, but that's our last scale that we'll get to. But when you climb that, you're, you start filling up from 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, angle deep, knee deep, loin deep, and over your head water. The dark waters fill you, and then it creates this portal, and then you step in, right? Actually, you kind of baptize like this, and you go in this way. You, you know what I mean? It just envelops you. Now you're on the inside of the house, right? And now people can't see you, okay? That's where that's then there's seven scales for learning how to operate inside the house versus outside. You mastered outside the house, and you got to master inside the house. That's where Paul is. You know what I mean? Paul's probably got his, his, he's getting his wings now. He's probably up in the seven stars. Got to be by now. So he's had 2,000 years. So anyways, so that's secret place, right? Um, yeah, you shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings, you shall trust. That's his angels, right? That's all inside the secret place. They're in there, right? And then they work when they're, they work with you when the house is upon you right it's upon you first then eventually you'll enter right you enter in certain levels of it and those things those angels work work with you as the house of god's built upon you just being born again is not enough everyone to be a conqueror being born again got you rescued from hell that's it you got rescued from hell and when you die you'll go to heaven that's it what, what exactly makes you a conqueror jesus conquered death and hell for you that's it but now you gotta wait to get your body back by, by a champion, by a master that has the dew on them where they walk over your grave and just builds up a whole, uh, 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 a portal and a ladder so you can climb up back in, you know, climb back in. And then, you know what I mean? But that's, you, you built your reward. That's it. You, you, you only got 70 or 80 years to play the game, everyone. And you got to you gotta master the game. All right, so now we're going to go Psalm 29.3. Psalm 29.3. Yeah. So I hope you guys are seeing so far that a secret place is a secret place of thunder. It's, thunder is a the house of God, which is a secret place of the Most High. It's a place. It's a pavilion, right? And thunder is a voice. We've seen here it says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. See the glory of the glory of the God of glory. See glory is water, right? And it's His voice. Thunders. So the Lord is upon many waters, or He's upon many people. Right, but he also has many facets to his. The waters is a thunder. Wait a minute, waters is a cloud, and cloud is remember, a cloud is a tabernacle. So God's voice is his tabernacle. God's voice is water. Water is a like a house of water or house of light. Water is light. So you need to know all these Thomas terms because it paints it for you. Because light is glory, glory is water. Spirit, the seas, you can say the seas. Remember, one foot is on the sea, one foot's on the earth. You see right here, God's voice. You can carry. You can be a, a carrier of God's voice, right? And it's all the beauty of holiness, right? So there's that. Let's go to Job 38. Verse. We're gonna read a bunch here. We're gonna read eight, and nine, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-five. So this will begin to paint something for us here. This is one of the deepest books and uh, uh, chapters in Job in the Bible. It says, "Who shut up the sea? So you can shut up the sea. You can shut up." With doors, the sea has doors. The sea is a spirit realm. You can shut it up. The sea actually has doors too, just like you can build a dam, right? But this is talking about the spirit realm because everything is uh, built that way. Uh, you know, uh, the natural is a copy to help explain the spiritual. Who shut the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? It issues when the doors are open or it springs out or it breaks forth pours forth, springs forth, breaks forth, right? It pours out. But if it's shut up and that door shut, then it can't issue, right? You can't pour out God's presence and God's lightnings. You can open doors and close doors. That's why times, keys, scales, and frames. You need a key to open up. But what is the sea? When I made the cloud the garment thereof. The cloud is the garment of the sea. Remember it says, it, remember it, says it he spreads his cloud upon the bottom of the sea remember it says that so the cloud has waters in it that covers these waters but if you open the door of this sea this cloud can't come out and cover this sea right so you got two waters going there two clouds two waters the morning and evening as i said and when i made the cloud the garment it's a garment see you cover yourself with the garments and and thereof and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it. This is a blanket. It's a swaddling band. Remember Jesus was covered in a swaddling band? See here it says Luke 2.7. Right there. And so 
you got a swallowing band, which is darkness. So there's a uh, right, and there's a cloud, which is a secret place. Basically, your 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 garments is a secret place. It builds that secret places. Okay, so let's go down to seven seventeen. Have the gates of death been open unto thee? So the gates of death is that sea. So the sea, it can be a sea of death, or the waters of death, or the shadow of death, right? It has a gateway. You can open those gates, right? And you can you can knock down their walls, right? Because here it says, have you entered into the springs of the sea? So you have to enter in. How do you enter in? By stand. You have to stand as, it says, is clay turned to seal, they stand as a garment. This is talking about, by the way, this is the ice wall and the flat earth right here, uh, about the waters and stuff. They stand as a garment because it covers the whole earth. The ice wall is connected to the firmament, which is like a garment. That's a model of what's on you. But they stand as a garment means the waters have to, the waters of the sea have to fill you and then you stand up and it covers you like a garment. That's what that means. That's a spiritual principle, but it's also built into nature. So you have to enter into the kingdom of God, which is right here, right? Or you can enter into the kingdom of darkness. You can do that. It's called the depth, right? The depth is the sea, is the garments that, that, that is either death or life, right? And has a doorway, has to be open. Have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Shadow of death is is right here. Is the gates has a gate? And shadow of death is the sea, right here. Springs is, it can spring out, just like God's can, God's sea can spring out. So both sides, right? And then, have you perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if you know it all. And you need to know the breath of the earth because the breath of the earth, it says there's the end uh, of the earth. You need to know that because that's part of the flat earth that you need to know the full scale So because the grid fits inside it, right? Because there's a whole plan here. I think I'll come back to this. Um, but it says, where is the way where light dwells? See? Light has a way where it dwells. Is there a secret place of the Most High? It's a secret place. Remember, it's light. Remember that. Remember that. As for darkness, where is the place thereof? See, darkness has a place and a way, and it has a boundary. You should take it to the boundary. Where do you you take it to the ends of the earth? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth. What takes hold of the ends of the earth? The morning. <laughs> the morning is what? It sets bars and doors and it is connected to the sea and lay the foundation. <laughs> you have to lay that foundation. That's what this is. It's all in there. You don't just lay it. It's talking about the physical earth. Now it's also talking about how to lay the foundation of the word of God in people, right? You stretch that line upon line, priest upon priest. You got to stretch that line upon line, priest upon priest. There you go. You lay it by stretch to fasten it, right? And there it says that Jesus, you'll fasten him as a cornerstone. But you know, it's, it's in Isaiah, okay? Right, you fasten with cornerstone. That's when the morning stars or the lightning sing together. It's when the sons of God as the angels shout for joy. When you shut up the devil, right? You shut up hell, and then they can break forth. Because then these guys can come out. That's why they're happy. They can expand their territory. And uh, so, because they're working too to get their their wings. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're getting their wings too. They're getting up to a higher place. Angels still grow, right? And that's when you got to command that morning or lift up your voice. The bunch of waters may cover you, right? And cause it to know its place, which is inside the hearts of man. That's why it takes hold inside the hearts of man. That's where it fastens or takes hold. And then the wicked shaken out the ends of the earth. That's all connected to, uh, uh, you have to know the breadth of the earth. And that's also earlier in Isaiah, or uh, Job. So you have to know that the way and the places, which is channels of the waters, what we just read, channels is way of the waters is the light, right? You should take it to the boundary of that you, and we're going to read up here, should know the paths, which is channels, to the house thereof. So a house of light is, I'd say, a house. means light is also waters, which is also a cloud, which is also the dark cloud, which is the secret place, and which is the clouds is also the tabernacle. So I'd say tabernacle is a house. So God's house or God's tent, God's tabernacle, God's cloud, sets upon you and clothes you like a garment. So you cover your nakedness. I'd say you start to get bright so you can't see your nakedness and inside that angels cover you. As I said, there's pathways or channels of the waters, right? Right? And that's why you, you get it by being born again. And there's a number to that. The bright, the, the, All this was a seven-day scale 
where then you enter into the treasures of the snow. The treasure is a treasury, which is the house. I say treasury. We're going back to a U.S. treasury, which is a storehouse. We're getting rid of the Federal Reserve. But here it also is, which I have reserved. We're getting rid of the Federal Reserve, which is the devil's <laughs> kingdom. Going back to U.S. treasury, God's kingdom. Isn't that nice? It's all in there, everyone. <laughs> so you enter into that. When you enter in, day seven, right? And that, but you have to be great or honorable. This ain't a number. This is a measure of the brightness of your rising. You'll be born again. Then you got to climb it so you can enter into that path. Yet path. We have to know that this was Job's answer, right? Which is the apostolic. All right. So we got that. Um, we just read Job. Job. Let's go to Psalm thirty-one twenty. Psalm thirty-one twenty. And yeah, so I want you to see all those synonymous terms that God's tabernacle is this cloud, is the house of light. It's a garment, it's the sea. As I said, it is a sea of glass on you, but there's a physical sea of glass that you stand on, but it forms a sea of glass out there, but you don't stand on the people. You stand on a sea of glass, a firmament, right? Okay, so that uh, actually, let's read up here because it's also make your face upon your to shine upon your servant god's face saves you when it shines upon you right that's salvation well so does this mean uh god's face shines on me when i get born again sort of his face shines on you in a measure but you're not face to face yet when you got born again you want to get face to face god saved you by getting you born again he rescued you to go go from hell and now you can play the game because now you can keep commandments it's written on your heart so now you gotta walk closer to his face until your face shines and that's salvation for spirit soul and body we're going to get to that but that, that delivers you, that's when you're in his hand. So God's hand, right, is his face. And then we're going to scroll, I'll follow this down. And he shall hide them in the secret of his presence. I say his presence is his face. And you're hidden where? You're going to find out it's in a pavilion. <laughs> so the pavilion is his presence. I'd say the secret place of the Most High is God's presence. I'd say the cloud, the spring of the cloud, the spring of God's presence. You shall hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion. Pavilion's presence is where you're hidden. Hide a secret from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord for he showed me his marvelous kindness. He does great marvelous things that we know not, but you can know them. We're going to get to that too. Kindness in a strong city. The city of God is a pavilion. Is his presence. You're building the presence upon you. Okay. We're going to read this down here later. Uh, we're going to come back to all this at the end. But just remember, strong cities, pavilions, his presence, is hide, okay? All right, so we're going to read, that was 31? Sure. We're going to go Psalm 83, 3. Psalm 83, 3. So Psalm 83, 3 says, Mary City will hide us. It says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. You call, you're called a hidden one, Right? If you're hidden in that, you're a hidden one. So uh, that one's that hidden one's connected to. Dun da da da. Secret place of thunder. See it? Yeah. So secret place of thunder is connected to waters. Even though it's talking about the waters of Meribah, it's still waters thunder. It's all connected together because all the the presence of God. Right. Okay. So now you guys can see that. Let's go to Joel two two. Joel chapter two verse two. And getting there so chapter 2 verse 2 says a day of darkness when blow ye the trumpet in zion sound an alarm trumpet's alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble so the inhabitants of the land can tremble remember they trembled at, at, we just read all that in exodus for the day of the lord comes for it is nigh at hand when does the day of the lord come when the when the trumpets are sounded and stuff i say the seventh trumpet begins to sound the kings of this earth the come kings of the lord jesus christ so it's nigh at hand. That means it has to be birthed, everyone. It has to be brought near, right? The day of the Lord is this trumpet, right? A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds. There is, thick, there it is, God's presence. And of thick darkness as the morning spread. See, it's the morning, the day dawn. So take heed until the day dawn, day star rises in your heart, right? So it's morning has to be spread. Do you know the spreadings of the clouds? There it is, the morning cloud, right? Upon the mountains. 
right? It's upon the high places. That's why I said we're going to go to Hollywood with this on our face. A great people and a strong. What makes you strong? That you spread the clouds. You understand how all this works. You climbed. You mounted up with wings like eagles, right? You're great. A great people. Mary said, were you so great then that your number of your days is great? Were you then born? The number of your days is great. Great. See, it's not talking about number of days, everyone. It is and isn't. It's talking about the number as a height, the brightness of your rising. You're a great people, and you're, high, you're strong, and you're high. There has not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Right? Because a fire devours before them. The fire is the morning, it is the cloud. You see it all, it's all over piece of itself, right? So a flame uh, and it devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. So I say this is a compass round about you. A fire devours before them, in front of them, and behind them a flame burns. That's round about you, right? That's that whole uh, pavilion, round about, like we read in Psalms, right? The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. The Garden of Eden, the atmosphere of the Garden of Eden, which is heaven on earth before e before Abney fell, is inside you. This that What makes the Garden of Eden is the fire. That's God's presence. It's in you in a seed. But this fire needs to make it to your face. It's inside you as a seed when you got born again. Now you got to get filled with the Holy Spirit, speak in our tongues. You got to prophesy. You got to interpret tongues. You got to get the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, zerring spirits. Then you hit the power. All right? That no, all those gifts don't work at just through you. They work in the whole body corporately. But yes, all of them are inside you when you got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, there's that. Um... It says, behind them is a desolate wilderness, meaning we devour uh, Babylon. Yea, and nothing shall escape them, right? So, and it goes on to read all that stuff. Um, that's good for now. Let's go to um, Job 29.4. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got to read that. For sure, we got to read that. Job 29.4. Because, uh, remember we talked about... Uh, the light, the house of light. So, actually, let's scroll down over here where it said that, uh, oh, that that I were as in months past, my, my old state of mind, as in the days when God preserved me. Remember that God preserved me, right? He wants to go back to that place of preservation. When his candle, what preserves you? When his candle shined upon, what does candle shine upon? My head, his candle shined upon his head. When by his light, his light is his candle, I walked through darkness as I was in the days of my youth. Youth is connected to the light. He renews your youth like the eagles. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. So the secret of God is the light of God. It's on your, upon your head, right? When the Almighty was yet with me. That's his presence. The secret place of the Most High is when God is with you. Or you could say, when my children were about me or when he's round about you. When he's before you, behind you. When he's a fire, right? So we know the fire of God, the light of God, the secret of God. So the house of light is God's secret place, the most high. A secret place of thunder, right? It's it's the hidden, the where the high June's pavilions, his tabernacles, his cloud. So God, it's the secret of the Lord or the revelation of Jesus Christ or the when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. This is what that is, right? As, but you have to wash your steps with butter and it, then the rock will pour you out rivers of oil. The rock is the secret, right? It's a river of oil. It's a river, which is waters, which is the secret. It's all, see, it's all again, which is this seat. That's his throne, right? You see it all right here, okay? Now we saw that. Let's go to Psalm 32, 7. Almost done. Psalm 32, 7. At the hour mark. <laughs> Psalm 32, 7. So, Psalm 32, 7 says, Thou art my hiding place. <laughs> Secret place of hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me. Well, didn't, didn't uh, Job say that too? From trouble. Job was in time of trouble. So, we found out that Job got out from his hedge of protection. Remember, he had a hedge of light, hedge of protection. So, it's also a hedge. So, a house is also a hedge. The Secret Lord builds the mystery, the revelation of Jesus Christ, builds a hedge of protection around about you. Right? To hide you from the curse. Job lost his hedge. God didn't take it from him. Job stepped out and it dissolved. It rolled up. The heavens rolled up like a scroll and that and heaven was shut. 
against against Job because Job's eyes fell on him because of pride. When his eyes went up and he prayed correctly for his friends, the way he should have been praying for his family, he got filled with the Holy Spirit again. And the, Holy Spirit, and it came back upon, the light came back upon his head and it created the hedge again. As I said, you have to see, you can see this hedge on people. You can see it, but most people don't have a hedge. You can also see the bad hedge. You can see the shadow of death. That's the, uh, the water barrier for to shut up heaven and to open up hell. Because it calls it the floods of great waters. See that? You know, but they can come near to you. Remember? Uh, uh, you can come near God, but also God comes near to you and the devil can come near to you. Right? They also can be far from you. Right? So you have to understand how near and far, rise and fall work. Come and go, cause and effect. Right? Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. See? Well, he preserves you by this compass. Right? He preserves you by that compass. Okay? So let's read uh, Psalm seventy-seven, eighteen. Don't forget, it compasses you round about with songs of deliverance. So he puts a melody in your heart through the gift of prophecy. Everyone he does that. This is all the seven thunders. What it is, you have to understand what it is on the outside because you can't understand what it is on the inside till you get there. So the voice of thy thunder. It's God's voice. That's why there's seven thunders, but there's also the seventh trumpet. God's voice is also a trumpet. Remember, it's not just thunder. God's voice is a trumpet. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. There is lightning again, like lightning. It lights the world. The earth trembled and shook. Now, remember how we just read in Job uh, about do you shake the wicked out of it? How do you shake the wicked? You shake the wicked by this voice. That's what happened in church home. It's all shaking. This is what happened. You got filled. You could see the cloud forming on me. This is inter I mean, I have two witnesses, everybody. I'm not just making this stuff up. So, thy way is in the sea. The sea is that voice of thunder, right? God's way or the channels of the waters, right? Thy way is in the sea and thy path. Way is a path is in the great waters. You need to get the great waters, which is the up here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was the last one. Never mind, never mind. So, uh, yeah, remember, the floods of great waters. That was in the last song we just read. So the passing of the great waters and the footstep and your footsteps are not known. You have to know God's footsteps, which is God's ways, God's path, God's scales. You have to know his, He numbers our steps, right? You have to know how He He spreads to tread, to come. When He comes, He comes uh, to shake mightily. God rises to shake mightily the earth. He comes upon you, then you come. He go. We are the te temple of God. So where we go, He goes. So when we open our mouth, He's speaking through us, just like Jesus did. That's how you can judge people. Yes, everyone, you can judge people. You know, that's how He leads us, right? So that's that's pretty much. I mean, point blank there, everyone. All right, let's go to Job thirty-seven four. We're gonna read a couple out of Job, and we're in our last final stretch. Job thirty-seven four says. After it, a voice roars. Remember, see the, the, the people roar? You can also roar for God. He thunders with the voice of His excellency, right? So it's excellent. It's high, right? It's perfect, right? He will not stay then when His voice is heard. You're not, you're going to move. Trust me. You're going to remove you by His presence, right? He directs it under the whole heaven and His lightning unto the ends of the earth. Remember the ends of the earth? You know, you, remember you take you, where do you direct it unto the ends of the earth? Uh, remember, it says gospel will be preached to the whole earth, so it's going to be the whole heaven as lightning shines from the east to the west. Right? You got to tether. You got to get basically all nations to glow like fire. That's dominion theology. You got to take over your nation in your northwood, get it in all nations. Then you got to get the brightness of your rising up in your eastwood, and, that, and then the whole heaven lights up. Then it melts the firmament. Right? And it says after it, a voice roars. That's a voice roar. Right, it thunders. So it says, God thunders mercilessly with His voice. He doeth He great things doeth He with that we cannot comprehend. But it says in Ephesians three that when you're rooted and grounded in love, you can comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's all right here. When you're filled with all the fullness of God. This is it right here. And then you see that lightning's on your face. Right? And, and it goes to the ends of the earth. Right? Then people see it on your face. Just being born again is not enough. Either small rain and there's great rain. There it is. There's a scale again. Right? To small rain 
is the water rain is the waters is the cloud there's a small cloud on you when you get filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in our tongues but there's a great rain when you raise the dead right you got to grow that means you got to look like him that means you got to pass a test you got to be well done good and faithful servant yes you can beat the flesh you have to do it it says in Job that you you have to do that okay so let's go Job 38 13 just right next page 38 13 we read it before I just want to touch on it he shakes the ends of the earth so that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that's the you got to command the morning you got to command or direct the rain you got to direct it man when we just read it, it says you direct his hand you direct it by commanding it so yes you do have to judge you have to direct you have to lead you have to correct you have to admonish you have to rebuke you have to chastise not in the pharisee way and not in the cuckold way where you're emasculated you do it the jesus way whip the money changers get them out you do it in a masculine way as a man women sorry you correct your children you know you know what i mean men you know let other men correct you it doesn't mean you you can't hear wisdom doesn't it doesn't mean wisdom doesn't come out of the mouth of your wives even moses's wife uh, circumcised her, her her son and and threw it at moses's feet but notice she just threw it at his feet and just said what the words of the lord said women got to stop acting like they're, they're strong and really uh, you're only strong in the lord and power his might when the man is strong in the lord and power his might you know what i mean the man has to be under christ who's under god and woman has under man and women under ch- and, and children under women that's the correct order of things, okay? So that way everyone's happy <laughs> and you're not oppressed. So, um, yeah, so you take hold of the ends of the earth. There is the end of the earth. It's called the ice wall, right? The waters, they turn as clay to the seal. You know, God stamped his seal and then they went and they froze and made an ice wall and he put the firmament over it, All right? That's what that means. And they stand as a garment, but also when you turn back to God, you, uh, you stand up. But also you make the enemy, the wicked, they turn, the wicked themselves turn as clay to the seal. When the seal of God is also known as the presence of God. Remember to seal his name? His name is also his right hand. Well, we read it in Psalms and the seven trumpet scale. Is and His name is the word. It's his presence, the secret place. When the secret place pours out of you, devils scatter. That's how Jesus casts out devils. That's how we cast out devils. I, I spoke in tongues to a man in Santa Monica, the presence went off of me like a wave and it poof, hit him and it sobered him up and it scattered the, the it made him sober and scattered those devils out, right? And that's how it works. We li- You literally feel that. The seal of God made him stand as a garment, meaning not stand up and exalt himself against me. They stood up out of that thing, out of that person, ran. They flee as a shadow, right? So... Um, and the and from the wicked their light is withholding meaning the lamp of the wicked is put out right and the high arm shall be broken that's what happened the high arm is hot you're high when you stand up and right and that was broken they were broke down and they and they fleed as a shadow right so that's all of that right there um, let's go to Psalm 27 5 Psalm 27 5 about 20 minutes left and we're done <laughs> Psalm 27 5 says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacles he told you tabernacles of pavilion shall he hide me hide his secret right he shall set me up on a rock a rock who's the rock Jesus Jesus is the cloud is is the Holy Spirit everyone Jesus is the Holy Spirit is the tab- so the Holy Spirit is the tabernacle you have to be set up so I say set up is filled up, is build up, is to lay up, store up, treasure up, right? You to, to make up, to uh, mount up with wings like eagles. You, it's I mean it's all everywhere. Everyone look up the word up and see what's connected to it. You set the dominion thereof in the earth. You do it by putting these words in you, and then you walk it out. When you walk it out, your times change because the water barrier begins to fill you up, which is this pavilion. God's pavilion, God's tabernacle, has it has to be risen up, just like putting a stake in a tent and rising up. When you pitch a tent, you have to be pitched, right? That's why your voice also has a pitch. <laughs> so it's a, it's a water barrier or it has sound waves to it. That's why God's sound is the noise of his tabernacle, which is also spreading of his clouds, which is the clothing of his garments of his tent, <laughs> Right? It's a rock. The rock has oil poured out of it. Remember we read that in uh, Job 29? So all this pavilion, tabernacle, 
rock, you hide in that time of trouble because it brings you peace. I say this is the marriage supper of the lamb. You build that up. You have to build up the outside first, then you step inside it. Then you got to build, understand the inside of the house, and then you build up seven levels of wings, right? Seven stars, right? Okay. And then up here it says, last one it says, when my verse ten, when my father, and so this is the scripture that saved me, everybody. When my father and my mother forsake me, which that's happened, and whether through ignorance or through uh, done on purpose, then the Lord will take me up. Where does he take you up? He'll start first, get you born again. Then he'll get you filled with the Holy Spirit. There's seven levels to your rising, everyone. Okay? He takes you up. We're going to get into that in the seven uh, lamps or seven spirit scale, or the seven day scale, what, Paul, what Paul's pattern, when he uh, how he climbed, the brightness of his rising. We'll get into that more in detail there. Okay? So we have... Where's I at? Um, oh, Psalm 78, 69, <laughs> and 54. Psalm 78. This is the, and then we're, we're two-thirds done. Last little strip here. Only got a handful left. So 69 says, He built His sanctuary. So yes, you have to build God's sanctuary on you. It's not just, I'm born again. We wait for Jesus comes back. No, you're dumb. No, you got born again. That's a gift. Now you got to build His sanctuary, which is like high palaces, there's a height to it. How, how high? Seven. All right. Like the earth which he hath established forever. It's like the earth, everyone. What 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 like the earth? Um, I don't know. Flat earth with a dome. So you are the earth or the wood and you have to raise the north over you. If you watch, on, if you go to my uh, Facebook, you can see me doing windmills. You can see when I do my windmills, it creates a dome. My legs create a dome, right? And my head traces the circle of the earth on the ground. You know what I mean? And inside that is eight different puzzle pieces or a scale of seven and an eight makes the wheel. <laughs> there's eight puzzle pieces and the eight's a wheel, but there's a scale of seven inside that eight. There are seven levels to forming your windmills when you break dance and stuff. It's called a yoga or yoke, the hand of God. It's my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So it has to be built. That's God's sanctuary. God's sanctuary is God's pavilions, God's hands, God's spirit, God's cloud, right? God's voice. What is put inside you and thunders and it has to establish it's like the earth. The earth is flat and there's a firmament dome over it. Okay. If we go to 54, uh huh. It says, and he brought them to the border of his sanctuary. There's border wall. You better believe the earth has the ends of the earth is a border wall, which is an ice wall. And his sanctuary, even to this mountain. The mountain is the firmament. It's called the mountain or the sides of the north. The sides of the north is the border. And remember, this is what uh, uh, Lucifer wanted to climb. God made a shell where those angels fell. All that air is now dark. So he's going to make those stars fall like figs from trees. He's rising up new stars. He's going to plant them right there and creates a new arc, a new arcway, right? And then the firmament melts. We don't need it no more. And sun and moon are not necessary anymore. Right, which is right hand has purchase. God's right hand purchased that, and actually God's right hand is the mountain, is the border, is the sanctuary. Right, and they can he cast out the heathen also before them and divide them in inheritance by line. You can divide by line, but also remember the scales divide line upon line, precept upon precept. That's which is what we're doing right now, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right, may the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. See, a tent is it's part of the mountain, it's part of the sanctuary. You know, they dwelled in their tents. This is a pattern of the original the original thing. Right, yeah, which is the sea. <laughs> Okie dokie. So there's that. That's the last one there. Let's go Psalm 119. Yeah. Final stretch. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. And that's it. We're done. Seven more. We have 15 minutes to do it. Ready. It says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I say a shield is a wall. Right? I hope in your word. His word builds the shield, builds the hiding place or seek place the most high. Right? Okay, that's good enough for that one. <laughs> Zephaniah, Zephaniah 2 3. Ze Zephaniah 2 3. You need your shield. Your shield is your hedge of protection, like Job had. If you're if you're getting car accidents and you're losing stuff, to him that has not, he seems to have taken from him. But I thought God's gonna just Jesus doesn't teach us a lesson. No, God doesn't teach you a lesson through curse. No, he teaches you a lesson through the Holy Spirit. If you have the curse on you, you got no hedge. Right? You have to sow good seed and get closer to God and the hedge comes and then nothing can touch you. They couldn't touch Jesus. 
You get to look like him. All right. It says, Seek ye the Lord. That's how you do it. All ye meek of the earth. That means humble. Which have wrought his judgment. Looks like the people near us wrought works God's judgment. Seek righteousness. Right? Seek meekness. Seek hum humility. Seek gentleness. Seek what's right. That's how you do judgment. It may be, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Or when he pours out his fire, you'll be the wise virgin that goes in. You won't be the unwise virgin that is in outer darkness where it's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Same thing. Jesus spoke of it. That's called seven thunders. You'll be hid where? In the secret place. Seven thunders. Be where he is. Remember Jesus said that? That where I am, you're, you may be also? Well, it just means when we die. No, we're going to cover that, that lie here in a second. No, no, it means that you should get there with your body. Not to, Don't die. You die to get there? You, you, like, that you're still that novice rescue. You got no crown. All right. Isaiah 31.5. Remember we talked about the light of the Lord preserves you? The light of the Lord is the secret of the Lord, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. All right. Which, so it says, as birds flying, remember it says, as birds by flying and swallows by wandering, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse won't, birds don't come to you, right? Unless you cause it. So this is saying how this works. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend when you cause on the effect. Defend Jerusalem. How does he defend you? Remember, he's a defense. This is, you build your walls of defense on a bronze level. That's a day four. Defending also, he will deliver it. Remember, he says he'll deliver you and save you by shining his face upon you. And passing over, he'll preserve it. So he has to pass over you or be upon you. You know, that's when you have to build your walls of defense. That is a the defense of the gospel, which is in uh, Philippians chapter 1. Right? The defense of the gospel is the Passover, when God puts his spirit upon you in greater measures. If God's not passing he, he's, and he's failing to come, it's, be, it's not that he doesn't want to come. He wants to come. But you have to form Christ. Right? That's how you do it. He formed Christ. He creates that water barrier. Okay? And he preserves you. Okay? So, now we have 2 Thessalonians 5.23. Or 1 Thessalonians. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 5.23. My bad. So, this is a good prayer. You should pray this every day for yourself. And the, it says, if you abstain from all appearance of evil... What happens if you abstain from all appearance of evil? Well, we can't do that until Jesus comes back. Here it says, yes, you can. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. What, what makes you whole? I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means don't get sick, don't, don't get diseased, don't age and die, right, until he comes. How does he come? He actually has to, he has to appear in form. Right? The devil, the evil has to go away by your sanctification, and then you walk it out, and then you're preserved blameless. Um, yeah, I want to look up here real quick. I want to see if there's anything up here. Yeah, it works for edification. Yeah, you have to edify one another. You have to be built up, right? And, it work, and that's what it does. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy 4.18. 2 Timothy 4.18, 8 and 7. 4.18 says, and this is what Paul said. When we talk about Paul's pattern, this brings it all full circle. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, which he did. Every evil work. Because he abstained from all appearance of evil. So he de delivered him and will preserve me, like it says in Isaiah, unto his heavenly kingdom. Well, that just means when he died and got martyred, he went to heaven. No. And he'll get his body later. No. He got to keep his body because we just said, pray God, preserve you and uh, sanctify your holy. Pray, pray God, you're preserved blameless, right? Pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless, preserved blameless unto the coming Lord Jesus Christ. Or you can say unto his heavenly kingdom. He preserved him. What is preservation? When he delivers you. And he said, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. See, he was delivered. See? Because the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, or the secret of the Lord was upon me. So if you go over here, it talks about. There was that crown of righteousness that he got his crown. Remember, a crown is a book. The crown is a book, which is open. And the book is a crown. And the crown is a covering, which is a cloud, which is spreading as the clouds. I'd say cloud preserved you. So Paul, yes. So if he's preserved and he got his crown, I'd say he entered in. Now he's in the seven thunders, right? But how do you do that? You have to love his appearing. 
his, his appearing as his coming. Right? And if you go down to verse 7, verse 7 says, I have fought a good fight. That's my works. That's your works, everyone. You're not saved of works. It's work salvation. No, you can't get out of hell by your works, everyone. You need the gift. But now, you to keep your body, you have to work out your salvation, fear and trembling, like he did, or fight the good fight of faith. Same thing. He finished his course. The course is the circuits of heaven. Like he walked in those external courses and internal courses, and he kept the faith. He kept the faith, meaning he he believed that when he obeyed God, God would give him a crown and resurrect him and preserve him and deliver him out of every evil, right? So he was ready to be offered or he was sanctified and he departed. Where did he depart? He went into the secret place of the Most High. That's what he did. He stood upon a sea of glass. Okay? So, and then let's go to Psalm 31, 23. Remember I said I'd come back to this. We only have two left after this and we're done. And right on time too. Mm-hmm. So remember I said it's a city, it's a pavilion, it's God's presence. God's presence is that cloud, right? Is Because pavilions of clouds, dark waters, which makes that city. This is the same four square city that's in the book of Revelation Jesus Christ. It has all the stones on it, all the colors, all the colors of the rainbow. So and all the colors of the rainbow are thoughts that can be read, right? And so that city preserves you. Oh, love the Lord or love his appearing, like we just read. Love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord, and the first one to do it was Paul in the New Testament and wrote about it. The Lord preserves the faithful. Well done, good and faithful servant. Mary says, I kept the faith. And plentif- and he's plentifully, or he repays, he's plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Right? So if you're prideful, you're going to fall. Right? God's going to pay you. God will also repay you by preserving you. Right? So your reward is to keep your body to go into the strong city. You're building a city upon you, then you enter into that city, and that city is a crown. You're, you're building this crown upon you in this cloud and allows you to look like everybody else when you go inside. Now you're just, whoop, you're inside. You're, it's written within and without the book, right? And so we're going to read Isaiah 4, 5, and 6. Isaiah 4, 5, and 6. Now I'm going to show you how all this, what this looks like on, on all saints. Uh, so right here it says, When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged or sanctified. Remember we talk about sanctified? He sanctify you holy or purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment, opening the book, and by the spirit of burning. Right? That spirit of burning. Didn't he say that he had heat upon him and the bitterness of his stomach, right? His belly. And the Lord will create... Upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, there's a dwell. What are those dwelling places? And upon her assemblies, I say this is the people. God's dwelling place is upon the people, just like it is upon the cherubs. But when He puts His uh, presence upon the people, the cherubs can rest upon you. He's doing layer, the old layer that's on the outside, and the corrupted layer that's on the inside. He's bringing this in here by building a layer on top, a story on top of the other one. And then it tether- when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, it weaves it all together. The inside of the dome, the outside dome, it's all one, right? And the dwelling place of the Mount Zion and upon her assemblies, we assemble, is a cloud and smoke, see, by day in the shining of a flaming fire by night. And upon all the glory, it's called the glory of God, is the smoke, is the cloud, is the fire, which is what God's creating, which is the spirit of burning and of judgment, when what that purges you and cleanses you, right? And this is how you're written among the living, written, written in a book, right? This is the book right here. This is the book, right? Shall be a defense, right? Or he preserves you. How does he defend you, preserve you? With this, right? And there shall be a tabernacle. This, the tabernacle is this. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow. Remember, in the daytime from the heat, right? The shadow, the, the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is the shadow of the Almighty, Right and remember the heat is from the is a, a fourth sun moon stars bring the heat and the scorching heat you're protected right the fourth one can't hurt you and for a for a place of a place of refuge and maybe refuge in a fortress and for a covert or a shelter from the storm from rain remember storm and Isaiah said it was heat storm is heat which is rain which is uh which is the uh, distress. Remember, they give you distress and trouble, 
right? So you'll be protected. You know what I mean? They tried to hurt Jesus and he just passed through the middle of them because he whoop and just walked through them, whoop, passed through walls and everything. We have the same potential. You just got to know what it is first. The scriptures have to be open to you and then it'll happen. So last one, Acts 5.15. We end with this. It's good because we only have four minutes left. <laughs> Acts 5.15. This is the last one, everyone. And I hope you understood all this, the seven thunders now. So mm-hmm. 5.15 says, In so much that they were brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by or pass by might overshadow some of them. Oh wait, I thought God does it. No, here it says the shadow of Peter. God's shadow comes upon you. The shadow of the Most High, shadow of the Almighty. Then you pass over and you overshadow with the, this is the countenance, everyone. The shadow of your countenance. Right? And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about and unto Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. I said, you can cast out devils with it. And they were healed every one. Why? Because they cast out the devils. Right? You see that? So, that's that, everyone. You see it? So, seven thunders is God's presence on the inside when you enter in. But to fully understand the seven thunders, you got to understand the seven. All Actually, you need to understand all the scales. But you got to understand the seven-day scale. You have to build that seven days. We'll get to that scale in a little bit. But in order to build that, you have to know how are you falling. Right? You have to sharpen yourself. That's going to be the seven candlestick scale. The seven candlesticks, make sure your, your, your candle's standing on a stick that you're standing up and it's lit. So when you're lit, you activate the thunders, you activate the stars, right? And you got to make sure you climb your day scale. But your day scale is monitored by the candlestick scale to see... You know, there's why there's seven different churches. The seven candlesticks are seven churches, right? To let you know how your times are changing so that you don't close heaven, right? So you keep everything, heaven's angels helping you, and preserving you, delivering you, so God can work and send his angels and stuff. You know what I mean? Does the book tie in on that? Uh, all that is, the book is the heavens. where it went Because when it writes it on your heart, the seven candlesticks monitors your walk your works, which is your walk, your ways. So you write it on your heart and the scriptures are open up to you. So when you understand your imagination, you can walk it out. When you walk it out, you fill up that way, right? And that, and that as you fill up, it stretches out God's hand, which is the rule of a scroll, which is a book. And that book opens up heaven. And now people, now you're a living letter read of all men. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's your crowns. Dominion theology, everyone. New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, there's a lot of churches out there claiming New Apostolic Reformation, but they still believe we're on a planet. That's okay. You have to wake them up. Uh, they still believe that Jesus will come back on a timeline and, and the devil's control of everything. He's going to let everything get really bad, right? No, that's not true. We're kicking the devil out right now. So uh, you can't be perfect. Jesus doesn't come back on a timeline and come back this way. He comes back on the on, on your face as a cloud as the Holy Spirit in fullness and you have to walk it out and you have to go to the cross. You have to, that means you have, actually you have to be a champion. That means you have to, you have to train godliness. You have to train your body. Make sense? Anyways, mm-hmm. we got about 40 seconds left. You feel like you learned something today, Donovan? Yeah, the only thing is it just kind of remind, it reminds me of um, the internal structure where you said channels, chambers, and cherubs. Uh-huh. So, uh, I mean, it's synonymous over, well, it actually is because the cherub is the spirit, which is the thunder, which is covering over you. So it just ties that all together. And that's actually the presence or the covering that goes over. And that's what brings about your time. You know, yep. there's the rain. There's a cloud that comes over and it rains and it makes you do with, um, makes you wet with the dew in the morning. Yep. But then there's the clouds that just hang over and they just don't do anything, you know? Yep. That's why there's Observing people that are... times versus making times. Yep. There's, yep. Yep. There's, that's why there's people that are clouds without rain and without water. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They talk a good game, but they have no power. Yep. It's kind of like, um, well, how everyone believes that Jesus is supposed to come back. It's like, you know, you have to work out in order to be fit and get the zabs that you want. It's like all these people that believe, like the really watered down gospel, it's like signing up for a membership at the gym and saying, oh yeah, there I go. But don't go and work out. It's like, you just signed, you, you came in agreement, right? You signed up for a membership yep. in that. And, like, so you're in. We're not going to do anything to yeah. get the full benefits out of it. Yeah, you're not going to train and be a soldier? All right. Yeah. Good. That's a really good yeah. picture, bro. Thanks so much. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. You. No, thank you guys. Thank you guys. So. You're welcome, man. We're going to come back. 
Yeah, it does. We're going to come back here again soon. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We'll see you in about a week. Bye. Bye. So let's take dominion for our people. And your life is a game.